Hey guys, today we are doing something, again, a little bit different. Um, I know a lot of folks out there right now are asking about how people are still moving to Florida after all the hurricanes. Like, why would somebody still want to move here? And we're going to discuss that a little bit because I'm, I drove through Matt Lachey today. I wanted to actually walk along the, the um, walk or the uh, parkway there to show you what Matt Lachey is like because there's a ton of people out here still but they're out here for different reasons. Many of them are still doing the cleanup. You can see behind me, those trailers, they actually had to build, uh, put in comfort stations. Uh, the folks out here don't have a lot of uh, their utilities and the amenities and stuff yet. So I want to talk a little bit about what we go through, how we prepare, and just why we would still wanna be here. Look at today. It is absolutely gorgeous, 85 degrees. Um, there's a breeze coming out of the, out of the east and it is a relatively cool day, yet all the sunshine. This is one of the reasons. I mean, obviously people come to, to Florida for sunshine, but what we don't come for is storms. It's just one of the side effects that we get. Now, if you look, this is what the storms do. All of this used to be nothing but vegetation. It was all filled in with mangroves and trees, and now you can see water everywhere. So this is something that will happen uh, a lot of our vegetation is ripped out and taken out and, uh, you know, we have to clean it out also when it's all busted up. So what we're going to do is just walk through real, real quick um, some of the things that we do here. So there's a lot of weather preparation, preparation and infrastructure that has been put in place over the years. Uh, we build our homes to a category five status, um, always looking for the next way to improve. That's why we're gonna have storm windows, we're gonna have storm shutters, we're going to uh, have generators that are now built into our homes. Um, we look for ways to give ourselves the creature comforts when things go south. And a place like Matt Lachey, you'll see in some of these videos, it has, it has been hit numerous times. The Blue Dog just came back, Blue Dog Barn Grill, and I am so thrilled to hear that because so much has gone out here on Matt Lachey. Um, we lost, um, Many of them in Ian, uh, some others in Helene, and now um, Milton, he had to come through and, and mess with us a little bit more. But we are able to prepare for things. We are able to see it coming from a long time ahead, and that allows us to not necessarily freak out about it, but to be able to prepare for it so that we're not stuck in situations like this and ongoing discomforts. So as we walk through this, um, I just wanted to tell you that many of our newer homes are built to withstand any kind of dev devastation that you're going to see um, within this video. Uh, the, the homes are built to the standards that we just talked about. Uh, we're using metal roofs now too, which is also going to allow for a longer uh, time frame. That's a lifetime surface pretty much, uh, easy to repair, and the insurance companies love metal, so you want to consider that. Um, I always come after new construction. I always will tout new construction because of these safety features. Many of the older homes don't have it. You can upgrade it. You can do the updates to it to improve that, but it's not going to be the same as actually uh, having that newer setup and the newer standard. Now, there was an article that suggested that kids are having anxiety from all these storms. Now, here's the reality. Do you know what is interesting about kids? they learn from example. So what do they see? They see their parents freaking out. They see their parents running everywhere, picking up all this stuff, toilet paper, paper towels, food, water, all this stuff. And they see people fighting over this at the, sta at the gas stations or fighting over gas. They see this anxiety in us. What do you think makes them anxious? So a lot of it's gonna be how you deal with the situation and how you're going to relay those feelings to your, your kids. So no, they're not anxiety ridden. I have a 15 year old. He looks forward to storms because the first thing he wants to do is take a skim board out and go tearing across the yard in the swim. The benefits outweigh the risks. They really do. Like all the things that we do to prepare and be able to overcome these storms, they mitigate a lot of the problems, but you still keep the sunshine, the outdoor living. Um, you have the boating, the fishing, uh, the golfing. Uh, we have so many outdoor opportunities here and it's year round. And that's why season is such a big thing for us. Season is out of hurricane season. That, this is our season for the snowbirds. Um, we're coming up on it here shortly. And that's the other thing to mention, the, the risks of this, uh, the storms and all of that, they come at a certain time of the year. It's usually from June through November. 
uh, through the beginning of November, and then we're, we're safe from there. We don't have to worry about it. In fact, we are very dry in most cases in our winter times, so we don't even get rain. Uh, that's why everything starts to get a little bit brown, a little bit ugly in some cases. But I just want to assure you that the lifestyle isn't going to change. This is what we get most every day. You'll see people, in fact, here's a gentleman that is going to go fishing. So he's not stopped. There's a boat out there. They're not stopping boating, are they? In fact, I'm going out this weekend on, on my boat to check it out. And the water's supposed to be clearing up out there. So we're gonna take advantage of it. The other thing to note is we're not the only place with nat natural disasters. And I think you've see, you saw that when Helene came through because then we had North Carolina, Georgia, and potentially I think parts of Tennessee also affected by uh, that storm. It sucks, it really does. I understand the torment, I understand loss, I understand all that. I've, I've had my own storm, da storm damage, not to the extreme like some of these other folks have dealt with, but this just goes to show these storms, they can affect people anywhere. Midwest gets tornadoes, the west gets wildfires and landslides, um, the east gets the blizzards and the snowstorms. And my, my cousin Eric, he's now working with me, he's in uh, Rochester right now trying to get things buttoned up up there, but he shared with me, try being without power in the north during the winter time when the snow knocks out your power. Yeah, that's not easy either. If you can't get yourself heat and you can't get light and things like that, these things happen everywhere. So you just have to pick and choose what is your um, tolerance for the, the different uh, disasters that go on in this world. Now, what's interesting about, you're gonna ask about, well, what happens to real estate when the storms come through? Real estate actually is mildly affected. When I say mildly, you know we just had these two storms in the last uh, three to four weeks. And when I went through and looked at the numbers, uh, October is slightly down, but we've got 50% of the previous month in sales already closed and another 1,063 or 1,060 or 56 um, properties that are under contract. So that tells me we're just about on track with last month. And we do tend to slow down a little bit this time of year just because people are getting back from their summer routines and their vacations to go back to work and school with the kids. So it's not that far off of what our expectations are, but it just goes to show the sales haven't stopped. They're continuing. People wanna be here. And one of my best examples is Paul and June, they just purchased a home here. They left the area for Milton to get away just so that he, they weren't uh, going to be affected their new home wasn't even closed yet. But guess what the first thing is they did when they came back? Yes, they came back. They went to Georgia, get away from it, came back, went to check out their home, saw there was absolutely no damage, absolutely no water. They closed on it last week and now they have their new Florida home and he's moving all his bikes down here. When I say bikes, I mean motorcycles, avid motorcyclist, and he's gonna love this weather. This is absolutely perfect for that hobby. But they're just one example. Jackie and Jay, they've had a home here for a couple years and it sits right on the water. They've been threatened by Ian a couple times or threatened by these hurricanes. Um, but you know what? They haven't run away. And in fact, they're looking at potentially purchasing a condo that's many floors up in the air. So that should another storm come, they have a place to escape to. Because guess what else? Those buildings, they have generators. That means you get your power, you get your AC, you get all the creature comforts and it's basically across the street from where their house is now. But they're not running. They're from Virginia. They know nothing about this stuff, but they're not running away. They love the lifestyle. They have a boat here and they're out on it often. Now, since hurricanes do come all over the state, we'll see them come from the east side. Uh, Andrew was way back in, in the early 90s when it hit uh, the Miami area. And you'll see a couple of them. They don't go on that east coast or they'll come across to the west and cut through to the east like um, like this last one with Milton did. He cut through uh, Orlando over to the East Coast. We never know where they're gonna hit. It's rare that they hit in the same place, a direct hit in the same place often. Uh, you might get some of the side effects, the wind, the rain, that kind of stuff. But in the long run, you are not going to get direct hits on a frequency that's gonna cause you to panic. So if you're worried about flooding, go inland a little bit. In fact, if you go just east of 75, there's almost never any flooding in there. There's been a couple of occasions that were very rare, but it's not something that's gonna be of any uh, regular occurrence for you. So please just understand, choosing your location is going to help you be able to 
uh, mitigate your losses if that's what your concern is. Estero is a great place. We're going to be doing a video on that here in the coming weeks. Um, that's uh, just east of 75. And uh, North Fort Myers, there's parts of that that go inland, uh, Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda. So there are options to get away from things. And even if you go up into the northern sections of Cape Coral, you get pretty high and dry there. One thing you will note is that there is a strong sense of community when this stuff happens. We have uh, many different stations, comfort stations, like we showed you here. And let me see if I can show you that again. Uh, there's a couple trailers over there. So they have bathrooms and showers and things like that to, uh, to help folks live as normal as possible. There is a little bit of a clubhouse over there. Not sure if they're doing anything with handouts as far as uh, goods. But I know that when we went through Ian, they set up a station over in one of the ball fields. They took the whole set of ball fields. National Guard came in, was handing out water and food, um, MREs, all that kind of stuff. So we do get a lot of people that band together. Churches are giving out care packages. Um, people are going and helping everybody else do the repairs if they can do it, put the fences back together, all the stuff that's relatively easy. Your neighbors and friends will be more than happy to help you because they, they'll probably need your help too. Now, one place out here on Mount Lachey that continues to get hit, and I noticed that Michelli's looks like it got hit. I'm pretty much guaranteeing that Yucatan got hit again. Um, the Blue Dog came back. Blue Dog has been hit so many times with these storms, and they are so resilient. They're back open. They opened today, in fact. Uh, like I said, I wanted to be able to stop over there, but the traffic along that main road between all of the uh, catastrophic uh, damage and uh, the people just trying to get out on the island to, to fix their stuff or to help others, uh, the construction that's going on to fix the damage, there's just too much going on to, to be in the way. So that's why we're sitting here in the park. Uh, gives us an opportunity to take our time and, and go, go through this a little more detailed. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, technology that we have these days that helps us through this, these processes. And met, much of it comes down to the flood mo uh, zone mapping, which we now have access to even in our MLS. So if we're looking for properties for you, and remember, I am a real estate agent here in Southwest Florida. So if you are considering this lifestyle and want to um, <clears throat> live this sun-filled life, I can help you do it. And we do have flood mapping tools that'll let us know what, what's the likelihood that you would have flooding in your area. If there is a small likelihood that you're gonna have flooding, you can get a flood policy. And what's nice is you can also take over the previous owner's policy if you prefer to. Usually it's gonna save you some money to do so. Um, but these technologies, even with the weather forecasting, when they're doing these spaghetti plots, I know it looks crazy sometimes with all, where they're all going, but they're dialing them in pretty accurately and we get to know this about seven days in advance of where this storm's going so if you're not comfortable leave that's the simplest advice i can give um, your things will survive or not survive but you're the only thing that's irreplaceable so get out of the way if you don't want to be here uh, if your family and friends are saying hey get the heck out of there get the heck out it's 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 a personal decision i like the storms i haven't had any ill effects outside of some damage afterwards to fix but nothing that encroached on uh, our home to give us a sense that we weren't safe. Now, insurance plays a big part in all of this. Um, as we just mentioned, flood insurance could be part of it, hazard insurance. Uh, the newer the home, generally, the better the insurance. Um, and there is actually a company out there that can help uh, because if you get a, uh, the amount of damage that you'll need to spend at least 50% of the value of the home on repairs, then they're gonna make you update all the codes on the home to do so. That can be very expensive. And one of the services, believe it or not, that is done down here, and I didn't realize how rampant this service was, is elevating your home higher. They literally can pick your home up and raise it in the air to get you out of a floodplain. But it's, it truly is a thriving business. And the more storms that threaten people in areas like Mount Lachey, these homes are older. And you saw that one building, well, here it is again. There's this building that has these bigger pylons. It looks like they're newer, could be concrete. And this home is one of the only ones to still be standing at the Mat Lachey Pass. And after that, how that uh, surge came through there in the previous storms, no wonder why. You have to build with the modern technologies that are being offered. You can't replace this, uh, this lifestyle. So if you're willing to put up with the, the negativities of potential damage and potential uh, power outages, uh, and uh, shortages on food and fuel and things like that, you're gonna have the benefits of the sunshine, the warmth. Hey, remember, we don't have any income tax in the state. So that's another huge benefit for you. Um, new, com new companies, new businesses, and new services are coming in all the time. Uh, so we continue to grow and build and thrive in this. 
And if you come here and visit and check it out, you talk to the people, you'll see that we don't care about the storms. It's not that big a deal. In fact, I think there's more people that are going to complain about the snowbirds that are going to be coming in in the next couple of weeks rather than the storms. They almost look at it as a storm of its own. So if you're a snowbird, I take that. I, I don't want you to take any offense with that because it's not against you. We understand you want the best of both. If you can afford to uh, be up north in the summertime when all the storms come through and still come down in the, in the wintertime and enjoy this weather, hey man, go get it. That's an amazing opportunity. And uh, you can be somebody that can share these experiences with somebody else that comes down asking questions. And if you're visiting, uh, I encourage you to rent an Airbnb that would be similar to a home you'd want to live in and talk to your neighbors. Ask them about their experience. Ask them what makes them stay, what makes them want to leave. And that's going to give you the best barometer, uh, give you the best set of answers that maybe you can use to help make some decisions. Last thing I'm going to say about all this is if hurricanes were truly that much of a deterrent to people and they've been happening for as long as we can remember, why are people still coming here? Why do they still live here? I've been here 30 years out of Pennsylvania. Why am I here? Is a hurricane gonna chase me? <laughs> Heck no. It is too beautiful year round. Uh, once again, I, I do a lot of boating now. And at one time I was a golfer. My son likes to go fishing. Uh, so there's a lot of activities that we do outside. And it's just, I can't repeat it anywhere else. And you'd find the same exact thing. If you came here, you just can't repeat it. And the first time that you sit down to listen to live music at a tiki on the water, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so that's a little bit more about why people would still be moving to Florida despite all these hurricanes. If you have any other questions about what it's like to live in this area uh, and would like more information, check out one of these other videos. And if you don't get the information there, do what everyone else is doing. Call, text, email, Zoom call, um, go to our app, whatever it is. We'd be more than happy to help you out because we've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.